And here we've got the Analog Solutions Colossus Quartz. And as far as I know, this is only one out of two in existence in the whole of the universe. So I'm very honored to have it here with me. Um, although I'm not looking forward to giving it back, I must say. But thanks to Tom at Analog Solutions for dropping this off. It's a great synth and an amazing statement piece. It's like an architectural marvel or some fantastical furniture. And it's almost identical to its bigger sibling, except for a couple of minor differences, and that's so that you can put it into the four individual cabinets. The first has got 12 oscillators with these EMS style vernier pots. These all go down to LFO rates, so you've got loads of modulation options. It's got two noise generators, a random voltage generator, and a sample and hold unit, as well as another nod to the EMS with the patch bay. And just like the big one, the second cabinet has an oscilloscope. It's LED here, not CRT like the original. And this only has a single keyboard, not two like its larger sibling, but I think that about covers all the differences. And this cabinet's also got four VCAs, two LFOs, and four envelopes. The third cabinet's got eight filters, four of which are SEM style 12 dB, and you've got high pass, fan pass, and low pass on those. And you've also got four Moog style 24 dB ladder filters as well. The final cabinet's the sequencer a mix, and on the top of that, we've got four moving coil meters, then two 32 step analog sequencers, and below them, we've got the stereo mixer with two XY joysticks. And all of them have got comprehensive CV connections across the bottom, again, just like the big single unit. And as you can see, this can get rather busy when you've got a complex patch, which is part of the form of modular, I guess. But what exactly can you do with all that? Well, I've got that demo patch from the intro still up. So I thought it'd be quite a nice idea just to go through what I've got on that because that uses nine of the VCOs, it uses five of the filters, it uses, I think, seven out of the eight envelopes. So I'm using loads of stuff in there, both the reverbs, one of the ring modulators, both the sequencers. So it's comprehensively using pretty much everything you got here to do something what I think is quite musical, quite chunky, quite beefy, and quite nice. I'll put that whole jam up at the end of the video, but effectively we've got five tracks coming through filter one, five, six, seven, and eight. We've got a big stab, we've got some metallic clangs, a bass line, um, like a noise shot, and a PWM tone. So we'll start off with filter six, which is the bass tone, and that's a single oscillator from oscillator one. And if you play this using the internal sequencer for now, the internal clock, turn it up. Beautiful, beautiful Moog style filter. Just nice, simple tone, but beautiful sounding. And that's being controlled by sequencer on the right using these gates. Flick them in. There we go. 32 steps. Could change that to uh, 8 steps. tone which is metallic clang and that's using the CV from this so I'm not using the CV to control the, the pitch on this at all I'm using the CV as a gate as well and we've got an X or a Y gate and then we've got CV as well if we look at this X and Y and then CV out from both of these what I'm doing here is I'm using the CV as a gate just so it's completely uncoupled then from what the X or the Y is doing so you can just chuck a few more up there. And this tone is going through um, one of the reverbs. Reverb two. And it's being created through the ring mod. Um, turn the ring mod down, just to demo it. <laughs> And that's ring mod of oscillators three and four. Next up, we've got a noise shot. 
So if we just turn the level up, and this isn't being triggered by a sequencer, it's being triggered by this keyboard here. So it's going through a combination of different um, VCAs. Um, we've got the envelope shapers here, that A, D, and R's, and we've got the ADSRs over here. And I'm not, I can't quite remember what's going through what at the minute. Then on eight, we've got something, again, that's not triggered by the sequencer. It's constantly running, and that's the PWM tone. So every time I hit one of those keys, we get a noise shot, but we also get a change of pitch. And this is being modulated by triangle two, or LFO two's triangle. The filter's not being modulated by any envelopes. And we've also got, obviously, because it's a PWM tone, we've got, um, Triangle 2 from LFO1, modulating full slip. And you'll notice that pretty much everything we've got on this has got a level on it. So we've got levels over here. We've got levels on the LFOs. We've got levels on the envelopes. There's loads of control over everything on great big knobs, which is dead handy. And then the one thing we're now missing is that great big stab. This goes really dirty and loud and nasty and distorted. Altogether then, I think that covers an awful lot of sonic territory. We've got the six oscillator big dirty stab tone and that really sweet sounding Moog sounding bass tone. But it all works together. It's not like we've got five individual tracks in this. It feels like one, as I, I keep on calling it one big patch. And that's what it feels like when you're putting a pin in the matrix every now and then you'll hear another tone changing slightly and you can feel like the, the volts behind the sucking bits off this or that and the other and it turns it into one big organic instrument and I really do understand after playing with this I mean Tom said that he's built this to be like stuff from the 60s and 70s no digital control but when you're playing it you understand that you don't get that VST feel in any way nothing's perfect playing with the sequencer for example trying to get each of those CVs perfectly in tune is almost impossible. Even with a tuner, you can't quite get every one of them exactly the same. So when you play even the same note through it, it just got those slight differences and it gives it a really nice sort of rich sound. So the first patch I tried on this was actually Giorgio Moreau, the Donald Summers, I Feel Love, because it's familiar and because it was done on something like this. As it feels so organic and you've spent an afternoon playing around and having fun developing a patch and it's great to have a massive thing in front of you you just disappear into your own little world but at some point you've got to kill <laughs> that living beast because to do another patch now i've got to unplug it all so you can see the joy of <laughs> presets only going to do this but it's i can't describe quite how absorbing and how fun it is just to disappear into this for an afternoon but one big question is can it do modulate beeps and bleeps and blops?
I think I've covered a fair amount of the ground on this. I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you understand a little bit more about what it is and what you do with something this big and why you might end up just buying um, a bank of oscillators or a bank of filters or the sequencer, why you've got individual modules. I do wish I could keep them, but they do have to go back for number one. I can't take up all this space with them at the minute, but I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, please think about subscribing, ringing the bell, join me over on Patreon, check out starskycar.com, buy some stuff, anything you can do to help support the channel because it's massively appreciated and it's appreciated that you've stayed to the very end. So yeah, you are my favorite.